So now we can think about what happens um, if, we, if we take these k's and we multiply them out together. So let's have that go up, and that go up. All right, so we have a ka and we have a kb. Oops. There we go. All right, so we have a Ka and a Kb. So if we take our Ka and times our Kb, we're going we're gonna to just multiply these out together. So um, I'll do this one first, Ka. just copy from above, times KB. Hydroxide ion over NH3. And uh, things are going to cancel out. And so I'm left with hydronium ion and hydroxide ion. What is this when you have hydronium ion times hydroxide ion? What is that called? It's another K. KW. So we just showed that Ka times Kb equals Kw. So we can take the logs of uh, all our K terms here. And if we take the log of Ka, plus the log of Kb equal the log of Kw, or pKa plus pKb equals pKw equals 14. So there's this relationship with a conjugate acid and a base between its Ka and its Kb. So if one is really big, the other has to be small, or they can both be sort of in the middle. But they're always going to add up in terms of the pKa and the pKb to 14. And the thing about these problems is if you're given a Ka for, for an acid, you can calculate the Kb for its conjugate base. And you'll be doing that a lot in titration problems that are coming up. All right, so there's this relationship between the strengths of an acid and the strength of its conjugate base. And let's just think for a minute again about this concept of strong and weak, because this is really important for the next unit. So if we have a strong acid, HA, in water, it's going to go pretty much completely over to hydronium ion and the conjugate. And this conjugate is going to be really ineffective as a conjugate base, as a base at all. So it's going to really go all to that uh, hydronium ion uh, concentration. And so when you're talking about a strong base, you don't really have to worry about an equilibrium situation. Just remember, it goes pretty much to completion. And so you can do complete subtractions when, when you're doing this. And the same is true for a strong base. So for a strong base, any B in water, it's going all the way down. It's driving the reaction all the way over here. And you're forming, you can consider it that however much strong base you added is how much hydroxide ion you have here. How much strong acid you add is equal to how much hydronium ion concentration you have here. So however much of a strong acid or strong base, you think they go all the way to completion. But for a weak acid, we're going to have equilibrium. And so you'll have to set up equilibrium tables to figure out, if you added this much weak base, how, how much did it ionize? So remember that for this, people get worried about the, the strong acid, and you just assume it goes uh, right to completion. And you can tell again by the Ka's and the Kb's uh, what's going to be strong or not. And so our definition for strong 
for strong acids is that you have a Ka greater, greater than one. Strong base, pretty much the only problems you use, people are adding uh, sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. There are not a lot of options for strong bases. But for strong acids, people are always worrying about whether they've identified those uh, correctly or not.